Hello and welcome to Glenusk in sunny South Wales and the third round of the 2019 All-Wheel Drive Club Britpark Ravenel Safari Championship. We've had two great events already to kickstart the season and preparations are well underway for what should be a particularly demanding third round. A hearty breakfast and a walk or a cycle around the course is in order as everyone tries to get their bearings on what is a very narrow and technical route. There are some new faces joining us this weekend as well as all of the old faces favourites as the championship shifts into high gear. It's very tight at the top of the points as well. Mark Holmes is just two points behind Rod Parker at the head of the championship race. Here's confirmation of the championship battle. Stephen Hyatt is joint second with Mark Holmes, whilst Mike Bakewell and Gareth Edwards are not far behind either. Chris Cumming is also inside the top five. Ahead of Philip Parpotas, Jason Rowland's looking to fight back after disappointment last time. Bruce Mallett and Paul Rowland round out the top ten. The class battles are set to be as entertaining as ever this weekend, as there are individual championships up for grabs in 2019 as well. These are the class championship leaders after the first two rounds of the season. That's right, so leading the Freelander Trophy at the moment is Philippa Tellants, uh, co-driving with uh, your father, James Tennant. Um, it's been a pretty good year so far. We're here at Glenusk. Um, it's bit different course compared to Ebbyvale and Walters Arena, very slippy, very tight. Um, you're leading the uh, class at the moment, um, what are your thoughts going into this round? Yeah, we're really pleased with how it's been the first time, so we're actually double driving this season, so 50% of the event each. Um, we had a really good time here last year, we got some really good runs in, unfortunately it decided to immobilise in the car park last year, so that was the end of the day. So hopefully get a finish, and uh, with two only this time we need aim for the win. Uh, what's it like uh, being a driver now? Because you were a co-driver for your father, James, in his uh, Maserati. Very different. <laughs> Certainly not as quick as he is. My aim for this season is to try and match one of his times when he's out in the driving seat. But uh, I think having been a passenger, I learned a lot about reading the land, how the routes to take, and uh, it certainly helped. Oh, it's good to have uh, somebody like giving you advice. James, how's she getting on? She's doing doing really well, and I, I I think she will be matching my times by the end of the year, which is uh, which, which is a bit worrying. But um, you know, I I think that's uh, that that'll be great if she can if she can if she can match me. That's brilliant. Yeah. yeah so it's an inter-family rivalry. It's, it's always uh, good for the sport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, and uh, going into this round, obviously. Um, each round is blind because you don't get to go around the course beforehand. Um, how do you? F what's your mindset going into that first round? Do you just attack it, or do you, you, is there an error caution? So I guess my uh, best thing is I'm very good at remembering from walking course. So just trying to remember the lines as best you can, so that you can sort of attack as much as possible. I think putting in a decent first run really sets up your day, so you need to you need to attack it. And the person joining you is Ian in his V6 Freelander. You're on the 1.8K series. Um, he's got a bit of a power difference. Does that make much of a difference on these tight, twisty circuits? Yeah, it's hard to tell. I think the main thing with these Freelanders is getting them to the end. So, you know, the power, obviously, on the straights, especially here, there's some long straights, if, they, if the course is as last year. Um, but getting to the finish and driving sensibly over the rough is even more important. Are you, is it an equal share when, when it comes to the runs and driving? Yeah, we try and do 50-50 as long as the runs allow for it. So you've got to shout at her if she breaks it? Yeah. Uh, yes, and she'll shout at me just as much. So, uh, <laughs> yes, it's, uh, it, it, it is a problem. You do want to keep the car on a piece. But that, that is the challenge of getting a free land around these courses, is you, you, know, you, 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 know, you go too fast, you break the car, go too slow, you lose the race. So, um, yes, it's uh, finding that sweet spot and uh, trying to get to the finish as quickly as possible. Well, uh, we wish you best of luck for this weekend, and hopefully you'll still be uh, top of the table at the end of the weekend. Thank you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers into the morning's action now then, and Mark Hone's ready to launch into the course for the first time. This Nissan 350Z engine car is an absolute beast and should be well suited to the tight and technical Glenusk course. That certainly seems to be what the early times are indicating. 15 seconds quicker than Rod Parker on run one and 18 seconds faster in the second run, which means that the winner from last time out is going the right way about doubling up here in round three. One of
one of those challengers for the victory today is no doubt going to be Jason Rowlands. Jason had a solid start to the season at Walters Arena with a podium finish, but disaster struck last time out, and now he has it all to do again to claw back those championship points. Things so far, at least, are going to plan, though. He's right on the coattails of Mark Holmes, only six seconds behind him after the first two runs of the event. The early pace is promising, and he's also leading Class 5. A class victory, though, is the bare minimum requirement for Jason today. As for the championship leader, Rod Parker has had a cautious start to the event here today. Arriving here with a slender championship lead that he was keen to protect, not too many risks were taken in the first couple of runs of the day. Will no doubt, though, be disappointed to find himself more than 30 seconds adrift of Mark Hones after just two runs. He'll have to up that pace throughout the afternoon so as to limit the amount of points being lost. He will at least take some solace, though, from the fact that he's third in Class 8, only one place behind Mark, so not too many points are going missing just yet. In the early stages, though, all of them are chasing this man, Adrian Marfell. Adrian is not registered to score championship points this weekend, and therefore, in a way, has nothing to lose. Perhaps that's being reflected by his early times. Second quickest on run one, Adrian then obliterated the competition on run two to take a 12-second lead into the afternoon. He's pushing hard, though. There are one or two mistakes creeping in, and the rest will be wondering whether he can maintain this pace for the rest of the day. Whilst Adrian himself won't be scoring championship points, he can still take points away from some of the regular championship contenders. Not good news for his Class 8 rivals, Mark Holmes or Ron Parker. The Class 5 battle this weekend looks set to be an all Rollins affair, with Jason having the upper hand over Paul in the early stages. Paul rounds out the top five overall, but he's already more than 30 seconds behind Jason in the early stages. That margin may start coming down as the day goes on, but Paul will have to try and iron out some of the small mistakes like this one if he's going to have any chance of competing for the class victory. Mike Bakewell arrives here at round three, fourth place in the championship, and only four points away from the outright championship lead. Perhaps most significantly, though, he's part of a sensational three-way tie for the top honours in Class 9. Of those three drivers tied in points, he is the only one without a win so far in 2019. He'll be glad to hear then that he's the comfortable early leader in Class 9, some way ahead of the rest of his competitors. He'll need to try and keep that pace up to add a victory to what's already been a consistent season. Whilst consistency is key to putting together a championship campaign, when presented with the opportunity for a victory, Mike has to go for it, and this is by far his best chance of a win so far this year. With the exception of Mike Bakewell, it appears to be the Class 8 and 5 cars that have the edge here this weekend. Third place in Class 5, and not far away from that top 5 battle, is Chris Cumming, the early points leader in Class. Chris holds a slender points advantage after a victory last time out and a podium at the season opener. He'll be hoping, therefore, to have a solid run today and avoid the sort of mechanical issues that befell several drivers last time out, including Scott Benwell, who blew a clutch at Everdale. He's down with Anthony. Thanks, Andy. Um, I'm joined now with uh, Scott Benwell, um, retired at Ebbyvale, and 
it's fairly understandable how that happened. You've got an LS400 V8 with 350 brake horsepower, over 400 pounds feet of torque. Um, it's a formidable machine. Um, you're normally running in the top 10. Uh, we're here in uh, Glanusk. Uh, where do you see yourself finishing here? If I managed to finish, the first event I came and raced here with this engine, I melted one. Second event, I managed to roll it on the first lap. So I'm not actually going to push on too hard. So I'm just trying to go for a finish. That's what I say now, anyway. <laughs> it's different when the uh, light turns to green. Um, yeah. But it's slightly different to what, you, what you've known in the past, uh, the way it's laid the course out. It's very quick, it's very slippy. Some tight hairpins as well to deal with. Well, it was the hairpin that I rolled on last, so I'm going to have a walk out and have a look, make sure I can get round it in one without going over. So I'll have a walk out and see what's going on. And because you're not allowed to drive the course in the car uh, beforehand, um, what's your mindset going into the first run? Do you just attack it and see what happens? You can lose an event in the first lap, but you can't win it in the first lap. So you've either got to go flat out the first one and give it its best chance, or try and survive for the rest of the day and hope people drop off. So you've got one or two of the chances or choices. Yes. So. Well, it looks like the latter's the, the, the wisest option. So uh, good luck. Thank you very much. Now, back to Andy with all the action. Back to our championship contenders now, and a fascinating opportunity to directly compare the pace Mark Holmes and Ron Parker. These two cars both run with very similar engines but have different strengths and weaknesses and with our split screen view we can directly compare their pace at various points on the course. From the run from the start finish line to the first corner Mark Holmes definitely has the advantage but then the course gets rougher and that six tenth of a second deficit for Ron Parker turns into a seven tenth of a second lead by the very next corner. It's a fascinating comparison and it just goes to show that despite the fact that Holmes has the early advantage, Rod Parker definitely has the capability to take some more time out of him as the event goes on. Over the course of this short first section of the route, Rod Parker is going to pull out a small advantage, over two seconds quicker already. Join us after the break to see whether he can maintain that strong performance. Hello and welcome back to the third round of the all-wheel drive club Brick Hart Ravenel Safari Championship where we've had some early drama from some of our early championship contenders. Steve Hyatt was joint championship leader in Class 9 arriving here in the third round and having won the season opener at Walters Arena outright was joint second in the overall championship. Sadly, after a promising start here today, he is out and with it he loses his chance for the big points haul that could prove crucial at the end of the season. Also out, remarkably, is one of the two drivers that he shares the Class 9 Championship lead with arriving here at Glanusk. Gareth Edwards, class winner last time out, and overall top five competitor in the Championship, is also out before we reach the midway distance. This will blow the Championship wide open and hand a clear Class 9 Championship advantage to Mike Bakewell. Back to some of those drivers having slightly better fortunes now, and Tom Rimmel, who is running inside of the top 10 overall after three runs. Tom is also fourth place in class eight at the moment and having a solid day. He'll be looking to try and pick up a few more points as the day goes on, which may well be possible. He's only five seconds behind Chris Cumming in seventh place outright. His nearest rival is Bruce Mallet, but Bruce is over 30 seconds behind at this stage. He is second place in Class 9 though, and that may well become his main priority as the day goes on. Bruce currently sits fourth in the Class 9 Championship, but with the early demise of joint championship leaders Gareth Edwards and Stephen Hyatt, this could be a great opportunity for Bruce to bring himself into championship contention. He's yet to have a class podium though, today could be the day that he achieves that. He'll have to push on though, on the third run of the day he lost over 10 seconds to his nearest Class 9 rivals, this second place is far from in the bag. The man taking all of that time out of Bruce Mallet is Andy Skelly, third place in class and just outside the top 10 overall at this stage. Unlike Bruce, Andy has had a class podium last time out, but didn't enter the season over at Walters Arena, hence 
cements his lower championship standing. He'll be after every point that he can get, though, especially having missed that first round of the championship. He'll have to try and iron out some mistakes like this, though, if he's going to have a chance of catching the very rapid mallet. Still, he's got a good chance. Second place would be some valuable championship points, and he's closing in. This is going to be a fascinating battle. Next up is Stuart Williams, running 12th overall and 4th in Class 5 at the midway point. Stuart had problems at the season opener, but fought back for a strong top six finish last time out. Here today, he's just one position away from his first podium of the year. Whilst he may be only one position away from a podium, he's quite a long time behind the top three, and mistakes like this at the hairpin will not help his cause. He did set his fastest time of the day so far on run three, though, saying that he is getting quicker, and also that the course is getting quicker with every passing run. Next up is Keith Wilde, running in class eight. But over a minute behind Stuart Williams and nearly a minute ahead of his nearest rivals, it's looking like being a fairly lonely afternoon for Keith. Wilde has had a rather up and down start to the season, so will be glad to have a trouble free run to the chequered flag today. However, he'd like a bit more pace if possible. A top five looks like a real challenge. Let's head back down to the paddock now, where Anthony has caught up with one of the newcomers here this weekend. Joining us for the first time in 2019 is Rob Mawson in your 3.9 V8 powered Warrior. Um, fantastic looking machine, very, very well prepared. Um, looking forward to uh, your first event. I am, yeah. I'm just looking to have some fun and uh, at least finish. I'm not too worried about where I finish. Just want to make sure it does finish and everybody's safe. So and have some fun along the way. It's a bit of a shakedown session for you. You've not uh, tested this car out on the rough stuff yet? No, no, not yet. Not this year. Did a few events last year and it performed OK. Um, done a few tweaks on the engine over the winter. So this is the first time out to see if that's worked and what the results come from that. It's a, I've, we've just been around the course. It's very tight. It's very slippy. There's some harsh hairpins. Um, how are you going to uh, approach the first run? Obviously, you can't. You, you've got to walk. You've got to walk it first. You to go very steadily. This is quite long, but the yeah, the wheelbase is 106. So any tight airpins, there's probably going to be some reversing involved. So we'll see how we go. And uh, where do you say you see yourself finishing, or is just to finish the plan? Just to finish. Just to finish. I'll be happy with the finish. Good luck. Yeah. Thank you very much. One of the closest battles through the middle portion of the day is the one for second in class six. Mick and George Chick hold it at the moment by nearly 30 seconds, but it's all very, very tight with three teams involved in the scrap. This pairing have improved their time steadily as the day has gone on. The third run nearly 45 seconds quicker than their first attempt at the start of the day. may well be some way behind the leaders in class six, but a good result is definitely still possible. It's easy to see through this tight hairpin where time can be won and lost though. It's very rutted on the way in, it's a tight corner, and it's a very safe and sensible run taken by the crew that still sits second in class. Class 4 is being led at the moment by Di Paul Hansen. Di won the first round of the championship and was then on the podium again in round 2, meaning that he is one of the more comfortable championship leaders at the moment. He's in similarly dominant form again this weekend, a comfortable class leader and winning 14th place overall. With no real pressure from within the class, you could forgive him for taking things easy, but he's not, as this mistake at this tight chicane shows. The reason he's still pushing so hard, well, a top 10 finish overall could still be doable, especially if some of those in front of him fall by the wayside.
By far the closest battle out there at the moment is the one for third place in Class 6. At the moment, Daryl Hardy and Robert Mawson are on exactly the same time and within 30 seconds of second place in Class as well. There has been literally nothing to choose between the two of them all day. They set identical times on the first run, and then on runs two and three, were within one second of each other. This battle is set to run right down to the wire. With such tight margins, any mistakes or hiccups could prove disastrous. Therefore, the pace has to be kept up. This hairpin once again, though, very nearly catching Darrell out. He wouldn't be the only one to slip up there. It's been a frustrating day so far, though, for the Team Parry car. They are one of the few crews out there who have seen their times get slower as the morning has progressed. And they are now the last of the Class 8 cars still running. A disappointing day then for the Parries, but it's been a fascinating battle up towards the sharp end between championship contenders Rod Parker and Mark Holmes. Anthony has caught up with both of them in the paddock. After two rounds with the All-Wheel Drive Club in 2019, currently topping the uh, championship table is Rod Parker and his Milner R5, closely followed by Mark Holmes and Stephen Hiatt. Mark had some pace at every veil, but this is a completely different kettle of fish. It's very slippy, it's tight, very fast sections. Um, you've walked around the course. Um, does anything concern you? Yeah, I mean, we've, it's very, as you said, it's a very fast course. Um, lots of straights in there, but at the end of the straights, we've got four hairpins, um, real, real tight hairpins with some serious offs. So yeah, be a bit cautious around the hairpins, I think, for tomorrow, and maybe the first couple of laps, just bring, it, bring the car home, yeah. see how we go. Well, you've got to have an eye on what Stephen Hyatt's doing and also Mark Holmes because they're going to go out and attack it. Yes, I mean, we've got a whole championship to run. We're only third race in. Um, this is set up nicely for uh, Stephen's car, Mark's car and our car. So we're all going to go out tomorrow and see what we can do. And you're still uh, looking for that first win? Yeah, yeah. See me tomorrow and we'll see you talk about it again. <laughs> Good luck, Rob. Thank you. Joining me now is uh, Mark Holmes. Firstly, Mark, uh, congratulations on the win at Every Vale. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, we're here at Glanusk, uh, completely different contrast to Every Vale, very slippy, uh, very, very fast sections, and then you're going straight into hairpins. So yeah. you're, not, you're not driven around the course yet, you walked it. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts going into it? Uh, looking forward to it, yeah. It reminds me a lot of Minehead, but luckily the tracks are a bit wider. But as uh, you say, total contrast to Every Vale. Formidable machine you've got here. It looks like a mini, but it's not. So no, talk through it. It's a GSR frame underneath, obviously fully independent, uh, with the 350Z Nissan in the back and a sad F sequential at the front. Got Riga dampers on it, which was starting to understand and get the hang off, but still a lot to learn from. Yeah, and uh, at the flywheel, 350, 372 brake horsepower, yeah. but at the wheels, around about 250. We reckon about 250, yeah. yeah is yeah. that uh, due to all the mechanical drag going through the transmission? So I'm led to believe, yeah. I don't honestly know, it's a bit above me. I just drive it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're doing a, a pretty good job of that, so uh, good luck for the rest of this weekend. Yeah, thank you. Well, let's check back in then with our early championship contenders at the midway point of the event. Mark Holmes is second overall, Rod Park fourth, second and third in class respectively. We'll pause the footage briefly and then we'll release them on their way through this high speed, but narrow and bumpy section at the middle of the route. The mini at Mark Holmes has arguably had a slight advantage when the going gets fast bumpier sections that maybe is where Parker has had the advantage on this first flat out run down to the junction seven tenths of a second have been gained already by Mark Holmes the trees start to close in it gets a bit more technical but the speed is still very high here Holmes is pulling out the gap all the time on Rod Parker and on this section of the route it's easy to see why he's doubled the advantage now nearly 1.3 seconds ahead as they turn through the hairpin and that's where the mini which is so much lighter on its feet is able to gain even more speed quicker through the corner quicker therefore off the corner and he arrives at the next junction even further ahead it's clear to see here why rod parker is struggling to keep up with mark holmes this weekend he's going to have a real fight on his hands he wants to try and take some championship points out of his big rival. As we come towards the end of this particular time section, the gap has increased phenomenally, already up to four seconds. Join us after the break to see if Rod Parker can do anything about it. Welcome back. 
Welcome back to Glenusk for the third round of the All-Wheel Drive Club Brit Park Ravenol Safari Championship. As we move into the final part of the day, we've sadly lost a few more teams as the course starts to take its toll. Jasmine Philpott is out, not because of this mistake, but because of mechanical dramas that have sidelined her. And that's a real shame because she was joint third in the Class A Championship arriving here today. With the issues for Team Parry, she could have been set to gain even more championship ground as well. But fortunately, the DNF will put paid to her chances of doing that. Her pace was strong before the retirement though, and she'll be looking to bounce back next time out at Minehead. Charles Dunn is also out from Class 4, a real shame given his strong early promise. Charles was the Class 4 winner last time out as well and was setting times good enough for second place in this event before disaster struck. He was also one of several drivers to have a moment at that devilishly tricky hairpin. Another driver out, this time from Class 8, is Ifan Davis, which is a shame again because he was another quick runner in the early stages. He got as far as run three before having to call it a day. 64, it's the end. <laughs> <laughs> Killed an engine. Back to the leaders now, where Adrian Marthel is proving to be just as tough to beat as everybody suspected he would be. He's pulled out over a minute's lead going into the final run of the day. I think his competitors will all be pretty happy that he's not here to score championship points. It's been great to have him out here though, and he's been spectacular to watch. That makes Jason Rowlands the de facto event leader, something he'll be very happy to hear. It's a tight margin in the fight for the overall victory, but his Class 5 win, barring any mistakes, should be pretty much locked in. Jason was always going to have to push hard this weekend to make up for the disaster last time out. If he can hold on to this position to the flag, it will put him right back in championship contention. That, though, will not be an easy task. He has some of the most experienced drivers in the championship bearing down on him, and the gap is not that sizable. This could be a real grandstand finish. Once Adrian Marfell is deleted from the results, Mark Hones becomes the Class A leader and second place overall. He's now nearly half a minute ahead of his big championship rival, Rod Parker, but he won't be counting Jason Rollins out of this title fight either. He was ahead of Jason after the third run, then lost 18 seconds to him on run four, meaning that with one final run to go, he's within touching distance and has work to do to take the place back. That mistake for Mark Holmes on the fourth run allowed Rod Parker to take six seconds out of him. That, though, was the only time all day that Rod was quicker than his early championship rival, and he may well have to accept that he's simply not beatable this weekend. This course has not suited Rod's car quite as much as he'd like, and he'll be happy to take a class podium. It looks set to be a fascinating championship battle between the two, and with the likes of Jason Rowland starting to find some pace now, it could be anyone's championship. It's going to be fascinating to see how this develops throughout the year. At times today, though, Rod Parker simply hasn't had the look. Here we get the chance to ride on board with him through one of the narrowest sections of the course, as his rhythm is disrupted by a slower runner. The bat marker has nowhere to go, and Rod is forced to sit in the wheel tracks and the dust of the slower car losing valuable time. Eventually, there's a space for the slower car to go, but the damage is done, and Rod Parker's chances of fighting for an overall victory are surely now slipped by the wayside. In his frustration, he runs on at the hairpin, losing even more time. 
run to forget this for Ron Parker, but it's still been a solid showing this weekend, and the battle between he and Mark Holmes has been fascinating to watch. Class 4 now, and with the demise of Charles Dunn, into second place in class goes Andrew Wards. Andrew was second at the season opener, but didn't score last time out at Ebber Vale, so this would be just the result that he was hoping for. It's been a solid day so far for Andrew as well, who is comfortable in this second place in class. He's actually involved in a nice battle with Team Parry, only six seconds behind them, they've taken four seconds out of them on the previous run. It just goes to prove that regardless of where you are within the overall standings, there's usually someone to have a battle with. up is the car that's fourth place in class nine, that of Lizzie Jones, having a really good run here today. If she can hold on to this fourth position to the flag, it will be her best finish of the year so far, after a consistent first two rounds saw her arrive here at Glanus, fifth in the championship. More results like this though, and she could challenge for a top three overall more mistakes like this and she could end up losing ground. This hairpin's caught lots of people out today. Lizzie though, one of the few to store the car, losing more valuable seconds. One car being driven by two drivers this weekend is the number 11 machine being driven by Leighton Dodds and Martin Hayward. They're sharing the driving duties and therefore sharing the costs as well, making this an even more affordable way of competing. As you can see, this is also a completely road legal car, showing that you don't have to spend a lot of money on high-tech machinery to enjoy the all-wheel drive club competition. They've had a solid day and have seen their time steadily improve as the day goes on. They'll be looking to end on a high, no doubt, in the final run of the day. driver pairing are being caught by another two driver entry, that of Henry and Peter Crudge. They're running in class nine this weekend, and whilst they're not troubling the overall class podium positions, they have been improving their times and catching Dodds and Hayward as the day has gone on. They arguably should have been significantly higher up the order, but a slow second run time has left them playing catch up ever since. They'll be hoping that on their next appearance in the All Wheel Drive Club, they can start with this sort of pace and maybe challenge for a podium. Joanne Pullins will no doubt be a little disappointed to be so far off the outright Class 5 pace, but she has, so far at least, enjoyed a safe and steady run through the event, despite becoming the latest in a long line of drivers to be caught out by this tricky hairpin. Joanne is very much looking at the long game with this championship, hoping to improve in pace and confidence as the year goes on. She will be fascinating to watch as we go further into the season, as she gains pace, as she gets more accustomed to this car. Watch for her to improve up the order as we get towards the back end of the season. The Class 1 victory last time out went to Richard Mayer Barron, and it appears that that is going to be the same result this time. He is a dominant class leader after issues earlier on for Philippa and James Tennant, the winners of the first round of the season.
Richard scored just a solitary point at the season opener, though, so every win that he can get is essential. He looks good to take the maximum 100 points here at Glanusk. He may not be the fastest around the course, but this car has proven to be near enough bulletproof so far this season, a trait that he'll be hoping continues to be evident as the year goes on. Despite a largely trouble-free run through the day, though, even Richard is not immune to the troubles of this tight hairpin. A quick three-point turn, and he's back on his way, but time is lost compared to the rest of his competitors. His big lead, though, means that he shouldn't have to panic too much just yet. Another chance then now to compare the relative speed of Mark Hones and Rod Parker in their fight for position. It's looking increasingly likely that Hones will take it, he's extending his margin, and he may even be able to challenge Jason Rollins before the end. But if we sync up the footage, we'll be able to compare these two through this particularly high-speed section of the course. It's definitely on the faster sections that Parker is able to keep pace. Once he gets the momentum up, his car is just as quick, only losing three-tenths of a second on the run up the hill. Then, though, things start to get tighter and narrower, and that is where the lightweight and agile Mini appears to have the edge. As they come into this tight left-hand hairpin, there's maybe half a second in it. As they come out of the corner, though, the Mini bursts out of the corner, and in a steep uphill acceleration area, is able to pull further clear of Rod Parker. By the time they crest the hill, the gap has gone up significantly to two and a half seconds. It's easy to see that Hones is clearly quicker than Parker around here. The question remains, can he challenge Jason Rollins? Join us after the break to find out. Welcome back to Glenusk, where there's been some late drama in Class 9. Mike Bakewell had been caught by Andy Skelly for the class lead and was then forced to retire with a broken diff. This means that remarkably none of the three drivers who were tied for the points lead in class arriving here managed to stay trouble free all day. There was also a late sting in the tail in the Class 9 battle for second place. Anthony Wartz had fairly comfortably held the position before retirement late in the day robbed him of what would have been his second podium of the year. He was running strongly before then, despite this moment at the hairpin that seemed to catch everyone out at one point during the day. Anthony will be particularly disappointed to have missed out on, on an opportunity to score some really good points. Freelander Trophy, meanwhile, things have been a little more plain sailing for the class leaders, Philippa and James Tennant. They have nearly three minutes in hand over anybody else in class and remarkably are running second in class one overall. As ever, driving duty has been shared by the two evenly across the day and they've seen a real upturn in pace this weekend. At this rate, outright class victories may well be possible before the year is out. They've proven impossible to beat so far this year as well, winning the first two rounds and now only one run away from potentially completing the hat-trick. completely trouble free though you guessed it this tight hairpin caught these two out as well proving just too tight to get around in one go The driver chasing the tenants the hardest in the Freelander Trophy Championship going into this round was Ian Willem who was second place in points arriving at Glenusk Second place is likely to be where he stays in the points as well, since he's running second in the Freelander Trophy with one run to go. 
This is the more powerful V6 powered Freelander, but all the power in the world still won't help you negotiate this hairpin. Despite that little misstep, he's still running fourth overall in Class 1 and may yet be able to challenge for a podium position. Luke Dodds and Kieran Jones may not be running in the Freelander Trophy, but they're well in the podium battle for Class 1 honours. They come into the final run less than a minute behind Philippa and James Tennant, third place in Class 1. Whilst it's unlikely that they'll be able to find enough time to beat the tenants, they've been applying the pressure all day long, hoping for a mistake that so far hasn't come. Let's head back down to the paddock now then, as some of the front running teams prepare for the final run of the day. That's right, Andy, and uh, running fourth at the moment is Rod Parker. Rod, you said yesterday that uh, you were going to uh, start with on the air of caution, and that's what you did. Um, as it stands now, you'd walk away joint top with Mark Holmes. Tell us uh, how your day's gone. Yeah, as you said, I, I started off very cautiously. It was very slippery. It had, it had a lot of potential offs there, and it was very nasty track until, we, until the first few laps were out there and we managed to scrub off the top where we could then pick some pace up. So yeah, it was, uh, we were glad to come home and uh, they carried all in one piece. Yeah, it looks like uh, Jason and Mark uh, have got the legs on you this weekend. Uh, what's been the difference? I think that this is more set up for Jason and Mark's cars. Uh, Mark's is lower to the ground. It's, uh, it's more poised for this type of terrain. Watch us in the rough stuff. <laughs> well, hopefully we get a bit of that uh, next time. But uh, good luck. Uh, a couple of runs left. Uh, wish you all the best. Thank you very much. Have a good day. Class 2 looks to well and truly be in the pocket of Chris Brennan. That is helped, no doubt, by the fact that he is the only Class 2 car here this weekend, meaning he's been able to take a fairly steady run to his second victory of the year. retirement last time out though at Evervale so he won't be counting any chickens just yet and will be glad to see the finish line. He would also no doubt be glad to see more competition in class two. Let's hope that more drivers turn up as the season goes on to provide him with a real challenge. Derek Wheeler is next up, running in Class 6, but he's nearly a minute behind Chris Brennan going into the final run. Dell has been a little out of sorts this weekend. A podium at the first round was followed by a win last time out at Ever Vale, but this time he is some way off the podium positions. Indeed, it would appear that a sixth place finish in Class is the best that he can hope for be hoping for a return to form next time out. Stephen and Martin Nichols, meanwhile, look set to get onto the podium in Class 4 this weekend. They may be some way behind the top two in Class, but as others have hit trouble, they have managed to avoid it and are looking good for their first podium finish of the year. In fact, it looks like it's going to be their first trouble-free run of the year at all, despite this near miss at the speed junction. Next up, in 26th position, is Tom Rimmel. Tom is running in Class 8 this weekend and had some issues early on which have disguised his true pace. The 
slightly powerful Class 8 machines are always a joy to watch and to marvel at the commitment shown by the drivers to drive one of these things down roads with such a narrow room for error. Tom will be hoping to get more to grips with the car as the year goes on and perhaps fight for top fives before the end of the season. Right now though, Tom Rimmel's biggest fight is to try and hold on to that 26th place ahead of Tim Pink. Tim had been considerably slower than Tom, but as Tom has fought back, the two of them are separated by just a couple of seconds going into the final run of the day. Tim's main priority though is to hang on to fourth place within class four, which would be a solid result for him. He was second in the championship arriving here, but had yet to have a completely troubled free run. Hopefully today is the day he gets one. Tony Rooney is the last of the class four runners remaining, and he's some way behind Tim Pink going into the final run of the event. With these more production-based cars, survival is always the order of the day though, and it's been a cautious run for Tony, and we'll look to see him finish fourth at the end. Let's head back down to the paddock now then, with Anthony and Mark Holmes. Thanks Andy, I am joined now with Mark Holmes. Now, Mark doesn't want to know where he's running, um, that's obviously something to do with the mindset, uh, but uh, talk us through how have you found the course? Fantastic, great course and a great site. Been 10 years since we raced here, and I couldn't remember none of it, but that was great here. Yeah. Um, you've kind of got a legs on the rod this weekend. Uh, the car's suit is low to the ground, more poise, better handling almost. Um, how many events in the, during the season um, do you think this car is more suited to rather than the rough stuff? Uh, I'd like to think all of them. Uh, Ebervale was fantastic, always liked that course. And each one's got its own challenging bits. But so far, so good on all the three courses we've been on. We've had a lot of unluck we've been unlucky with punches, had a lot of punches, had two today, yeah. um, so which cost us quite a bit. Yeah, and you've been uh, putting that uh, Nissan V6 through its paces, I've heard it screaming all day. Oh, mate, yeah, I'm well chuffed, <laughs> yeah, that does go well, yeah, well pleased with it, yeah. Uh, what's the transmission, is it a sequential box? Yeah, the sad F1, yeah, yeah, with the flat shift. Yeah, so you just put your foot flat on the floor, bang, bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty easy on it going down. I do use the clutch to go down. <laughs> a couple of times I haven't, but don't like it on that. Yeah, it's not fair on it. All right, well, uh, good luck for the rest of the day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Mark may not want to know where he's running, but what I can tell you is that he's only eight seconds behind Jason Rowland going into the final run of the day. Here we ride on board with Mark and Rod Parker again. He's looking less and less likely to be able to challenge the top two as they head through the final section of the course. Mark Holmes pushing on in his fight to beat Jason Rowland for what is effectively the victory. Adrian Marfell, the leader, is not scoring points. He's 1.4 seconds quicker than Rod Parker through that particular part of the course and is on full attack mode here. Let's ride on board and enjoy the view. Well, Mark continues to pull out the advantage over Rod, and remarkably, that is enough for him to snatch the position from Jason Rollins on the final run by just a single second. Here is confirmation of the result then. Marfell wins, but does not score championship points. Mark Hones is ahead of Rollins by a solitary second. Rod Parker is next ahead of Andy Skelly, who wins in Class 9. Scott Benwell takes Class 6 honours, while Stuart Williams wins in Class 5. And the tenants hang on to the Freelander Trophy. In the championship then, Rod Parker and Mark Hones are now tied on points, with Chris Cumming third and Jason Rollins fighting back into contention now. Fourth position, Bruce Mallett rounds out the top five.